Since when I first came, got here earlier, before even any of you arrived, there were what felt like hundreds of media outlets setting up in the room. I was like, what's all the media here for? What could it possibly be, Senator? <laughs> Uh, we are, I'm really very, very pleased um, that Senator Paul could join us here today. Uh, I actually met him, and I bet you don't remember this, I, I would not expect you to, in 2007, when I was still hosting a radio show down in Nashua, uh, Senator was in town uh, uh, campaigning for his father, and we talked about his dad, obviously an awful lot, one of the questions I asked him was, uh, so what about you, you think you're ever going to run for office? I didn't even think of president. I said, you ever run for office? He said, now my dad's the politician in this family. <laughs> <laughs> With all due respect, I think you might have been wearing those same jeans that day as well. <laughs> <laughs> I am very, very pleased that Senator Paul is here with us today. I am a big believer that we cannot win if we do not broaden our party and embrace all of the voices. You know, I say all the time, whatever it is that drives you to the Republican Party, whatever part of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness inspires you, I want to stand with you. I want to fight with you for those values and for those principles. We must stand together. And I think that Senator Paul has been a great voice for that message. He has been a strong voice for limited government, for balancing the budget, and in the last couple of weeks, he's been a leader in the fight against his administration on the IRS, on Benghazi. And he was the first person to go straight to go to the press and look him in the eye of the camera and say straight out, Hillary Clinton is not qualified to be president of the United States of America. I will preserve and defend the Constitution. It doesn't say, I might, if it's inconvenient. If it's convenient, it's not inconvenient. And so we went through this, we had written letters, we went back and forth, and we could get no answer. And finally we got an answer. And the 
People say, well, that's absurd. He would never kill an American. And as I think I said somewhere, my wife said, in the 13 hour, ruin their cafe experience. <laughs> Sometimes you say things you weren't really intending to after 13 hours. But the thing is, is that we passed the year before legislation that gives your government the ability to indefinitely detain any one of you without a trial, without a lawyer, and actually send one of you to Guantanamo Bay. That sounds absurd also. And the president said he doesn't intend to use the power. It's not about intention to use power. The reason we kept, we keep power from our government, while we've always jealously guarded power, and from, why from the very beginning we wanted to limit the power of the monarch, we were afraid about the gravitation of power. You know, Madison said when someone has power, you need to have a certain degree of distrust. Madison also said if government were comprised of angels, we wouldn't have had to have rules. Patrick Henry said the reason we wrote the Constitution was not to restrain you, it was to restrain your government. The First Amendment isn't about restricting your religious freedom, it's about restricting what government can do to your religion, how they get involved in your religion. These are important things, whether they, your officials say they will use them or not, they are important. You can imagine a situation where an Arab American in our country is communicating by email with a cousin who lives in Lebanon. Somebody says the cousin's a, a terrorist, and now you're associated with terrorism. Do you think you'd get at least a lawyer to defend yourself? And when I brought this question up, another Republican on the Senate floor said, well, I said, could you send someone, to Guant an American, to Guantanamo Bay without a trial, without an accusation? And he said, if they're dangerous. And I said, well, that begs the question, who gets to decide if they're dangerous? Another senator said, well, when they ask for a lawyer, you tell them to shut up. Well, the thing is, is that when I see in the young soldiers who come back, my wife and I just helped build a house for a young soldier who lost both legs and his arm, and one arm. When they come home, I ask them what they're fighting for, and they say the Bill of Rights. That is the freedom. So when we talk about fighting for freedom, we have to define what we're fighting for. It has to be about the Constitution. It has to be about the Bill of Rights. Some may not agree with this, but think about it. We had the Boston bomber recently, and I was at a charity event that, about a week later, and a Boston policeman was down there, and he was giving a speech. It was one of the best speeches I think I've heard in a long time. He, he ran to the scene, he helped apply tourniquets, he helped people at the scene, he had the same thought every one of us would have, anger, wanting to punish these people. He still has that, I still have that, it's human, it's normal. But he said, what separates us from them is that when we did finally capture him and the guns were gone and removed, we, we could have used lethal force and we did. But once it was all removed and he was captured, we sent the suspect to a hospital. He's going to be tried in a court of law. He's going to have an attorney. In their country, he would have been dragged through the streets, if it had been an American, that had been drugged through the streets and beaten to death with a tire iron. We are different than they are. But it's our Bill of Rights, it's our law, it's going through the process that makes us different than them. With regard to...